There are two ways oh, to... Oh, part two! It. Part two! Let's go, dude! One involves actually what we call a needle injector. So this is normally going into bone. So the wire holds it in place. Hello, I'm Victor M. Sweeney, licensed funeral director and mortician, and this is part two of Mortician Support. Let's go, dude. This guy's, this guy's totally not creepy. Right, first up, here's a question from lovely Nicole. How do morticians get into their profession? Like what? The dad must be. It's the dad or, or whatnot something. to right. want to pursue that career. That is such a fine question. Family business. Um, it differs from mortician to mortician. Decades ago, it used to be more common that uh, a funeral home was a family business. Yep. So it might be that your yep. dad was a mortician and your grandpa. My neighbor actually wait. That's a doxing. I'm doxing myself, actually. You know what? My neighbor is no one's... Yep, not a family business, not a mortician. Before him, and you just follow in their footsteps to carry on that family business and keep up the family name. Today, most morticians are what we might call first-generation funeral directors. So they're going into it cold, they're learning the trade, and then going off on their own to either work for somebody or own their own funeral home. For myself, I always grew up kind of surrounded by death, if you will. I found my... <laughs> best friend uh, dead in his bed when he was when I was four. I had a sister that was born before me that passed away and we'd always visit her grave. And then for about 10 years when I was a kid, we lost a close family member, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, every year for about a decade. So I was around funerals a whole lot. It made me understand that this is something important uh, and worth doing. Bro, there's probably trauma there. I mean, what the fuck? A kid, he found a dead kid when he, when he was four? Bro, what the Here's a question from Anthony Pyle. Can you be buried according to your heritage or beliefs? In Colorado, for instance, there is one county that actually allows burial outside on a pyre. So you could build a, <laughs> a burial pyre out of wood and light up grandpa if you were in that county and you had proper write-off from the government. Next wait, up, what? we have from... Wait, wait, what? Wait, you have to get... Wait, if I asked my family to just burn me, like, just to burn me, they can just do that, right? They just go in the back garden and just burn me, right? Like, they could just burn me. If I, want, if I want them to do a bonfire, just burn me in a fucking bonfire. Wait, no? What the fuck? No, no shot. Wait, what? What if you're on a farm? What if you're on a farm? So you're telling me I can go into the back? They can... Imagine the smell. Yeah, well, what, what if you're in the middle of nowhere? And there's no one around? I love burning a human. You don't need permits to burn things. Mate, I had a bonfire at my house literally yesterday. Like, my clothes are covered in ash. This, do you know, I actually burned my fucking hair off my arm, okay? The hair on my, on this arm right here. So it's actually a little bit sus. I was around there by myself and I poured petrol into the fucking bonfire drum. Okay? And I, I didn't put that much in. It was only like, I poured it like a couple, I was like, glug, glug, whatever. And bruh, let me tell you, I fucking lit it, and I was like, I only put a little bit on it, and especially, okay, uh, like, I lit the match, and I was putting it down, and it just went, and just fucking, boom, and then fucking, my whole, uh, my arm that put the match on, because I intentionally did this, right? I did this, because I didn't, you know, I was like, just in case. All fucking, all the hair on it was just singed, just singed off. What? Not a fake story, bro. What? You can literally see the hair on my arm. Is I mean, it's not. There's no way you're gonna be able to compare the two. I mean, why would I make up a fake story about the hair on my arm getting sanded off? You can't see it. It's not. It's no point. It's literally pointless. My hair's my hair's like transparent, but it was all. It smelled very much like burnt hair, and all, all, even around the edges, it all got singed. Sh I did not shave my arms. Oh my god, bro. What the fuck? What are you? What the fuck? Okay, chat, look. Look, while I was burning the stuff, I even cut my hands as well, look. You see here, on my index finger there, and then on my knuckle here. This, this happened, um... See that? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. This is that, and that was from bending the sticks that had thorns on them to put them into the fucking bonfire. Okay, bitch. What the fuck are we saying? The point is, you don't have to have fucking permits to do fires. You can do fires whenever the fuck you want to do fires, okay? You just make a fire. So why the fuck can I get grandpa and just put him on the fucking fire? No shot. I can just, like, dude, fuck off. A total random, why do dead bodies get stiff? 
the proper term for the stiffening of bodies after death is called rigor mortis. So this would be when the muscles of the body tense up until the tissues themselves start to break down a little bit. So if a body is in rigor and we don't want it to be, the best thing that we can do is what's called breaking rigor. Typically, uh, you're gonna see rigor mortis in the joints is where it's primarily gonna be a problem. So to break rigor, all you actually have to do is manipulate those joints forcefully. And I'm talking bending those fingers way, way back. Um, and after you do that a number of times, they'll loosen up. So then you can have the hands positioned properly. Our next question is from Jesus. Alicia Wood. When morticians give you a shower, Asking for a friend. It's a fine question because really, uh, we do Wipe bathe down. every deceased that comes through. So we'll wash their bodies, we'll shampoo their hair. But for your question, giving a shower, I cannot imagine trying to prop somebody up, <laughs> trying to make that happen. I'm having them laying on a table and doing it while they're laying down and I don't have to hold them up with one arm is uh, definitely ideal. Here's a question from Sovereign Insane. If somebody Bro, wished- am I fucked up? It's like, wait, I just love it. I would want, dude, if I had some fucking mortician preparing the body of like one of my family members that was a female i'd want a female mortician i want a female mortician to do if he's preparing my body okay just uh, like yeah i now uh, maybe i'm projecting or some shit uh you could say that okay now you are saying it's immediately so, yeah you did exactly what i said you would say it's funny uh but no i'm, I'm for reals i'm just saying look at chat you guys saw everyone boobering whenever the fuck i had the female corpses Okay, you guys saw that shit. I mean, bro, I don't know. I'm just saying, I just, I just want a female mortician, okay? If I, someone, if I had one of my family members as a female, I want a female mortician. Just like if you having like a, you know, just like a, you know, if you had a doctor that was doing like the, the fucking, the fucking vaginal like things where they're sticking things up there. Okay, I want a female one. Okay, straight facts. Wish to be turned into a life-size doll after death. Would it be legal? Absolutely not. Here's a question from VV Capitalism. How do morticians fix a body that was shot between the eyes? Like they just fill it in with silly putty? One of the things uh, that we do and we work very hard on is what we call restoration. When someone's shot between the eyes, provided the rest of their head is there and we just have a bullet hole, first we'd probably want to pack it with cotton or some other firmer material. And then on the topmost layer, we're going to cover it with what's called a, a wax. Um, this wax is called the surface restorer. So I'll show you how it works. So we have a wax, it's, it's softer than candle wax, but when it's introduced to the heat of the hand, it tends to soften up. And then this wax we can use to wax over a wound. See how it covers it just like that? And then we can get the proper texture with uh, stippling and with brushwork and then color over it after that and try to blend it in. Here's a question from Jesus. Genealogy Jill. Are sky burials legal in the United States? So a sky burial oh, is where you leave a body out on a high place for vultures and other uh, animals to pick apart. It is not legal. Here's a question. What the fuck? Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? Who the fuck wants a fucking, nobody wants a sky burial. What the fuck? That sounds like a good way to spread disease. From Kelly Elizabeth. Ew. Do morticians really sew your mouth shut when you're dead? Hashtag the right. The answer to that is yes, and also no. You might be thinking that we're talking about sewing the lips. We generally the don't sew the lips closed. You can imagine how much time and how much <laughs> fine detail it would take to do that. There are two ways to close a mouth. One involves actually using suture to bring the jawbone up with a needle and some thread. This is a large S-curve needle. You would go up out of the nose, across the septum, back down, and then you're actually gonna go through the frenulum, the frenulum of your lip here. Jesus There's usually a little piece Christ. of skin. You'll go through that all on the inside oh of your mouth. God. Once you do that, you can just pull the two ends oh, together fuck, and it tightens the jaw right up. The Holy other method shit. of closing a mouth is with what we call a needle injector. We have a mouth here and we're gonna take- Why is it so brutal? Something is so brutal. It's because we're imagining it happening to someone alive, but if, if they're dead, it doesn't matter, right? This needle injector- it's Just preparing and some meat. it's a piston, you see? It clicks. So this piston is gonna drive our sharp brad and into out. the wood here, just as a demonstration. So this is normally going into bone. So there's our bottom one. And there's our top one. And then you simply twist them together so the wire holds it in place. Once the jaw itself is closed, the lips and the rest of the mouth uh, take their form uh, very naturally. Here's a question from Haley. Hey, how do morticians do people they know's bodies? I could never. I actually do Mrs. that. Dude, I, do you know what? Speaking about Dexter, you're saying this guy's like Dexter, right? Okay. 
Bro, do you know that someone would watch Dexter and then decided that they were gonna fucking make a kill room and start killing people? And he actually fucking murdered someone? Because he fucking liked the show Dexter so much? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, the, the straight up, the straight up made a dating profile. Okay, he made a dating profile and it said, and basically lured people into a shed by these obscure directions saying that he didn't want to give out, they didn't want to dox his dress or anything. So he'd fucking sit there and he would fucking lure them into the shed. And, and, and after they come into the shed, they'd be like just full of plastic and shit everywhere. But like, what the fuck's going on here? Thinking they're going to meet up with some broad, like to go out on a date. Next minute, some big with a fucking hockey mask comes out and he just beats them and fucking beats them. Until, uh, until, effect until effectively he killed them and then he just cut them apart uh, and then put them down a sewer drain. Um, and then the do you know what, what the did, dude? Do you know what the did? He started making a movie script where he described the exact details. Okay? The exact details of what happened because he wanted to make it into a fucking TV show. Okay, because he wanted to make it into a fucking TV show. Yeah, I watched a Mr. Bourne video on this. Yes, I did. Uh, okay, let me let me fucking ban this clown. who's just spamming it, paint jams. Um, but none of that had been released to the public. None of the details of the first guy that he tried to assault and kill had been released to the public. So he basically just self-exposed himself. The fucking clown. And the police were like, okay, well, just clearly, this is the only way you can know this if you're literally the fucking guy. Boom. Pretty frequently. And honestly, it's kind of nice because you know the person, you know how they do their hair, you know how they do their makeup, you know how they like to get dressed. And here's a question uh. from Ambrin. When viewing my grandmother for her funeral, I noticed her nose looked odd. Upon closer inspection, it appeared to have been squashed and carefully restructured. Is this a common occurrence? Ambrin, that is a good question, and I'm sorry that was your experience. I wouldn't say it's common, but it depends on the manner of death. So let's say someone passed away where they had a very quick heart attack and fell onto their face. Um, it's possible their nose might have been broken, or maybe they laid on their nose for a number of hours and it maintained that squashed look. Then it would be just as simple as straightening it out, maybe putting a little uh, cotton in the nostrils to hold their shape, and then embalming the body so those tissues hold their shape. Here's a question from Fucking Tiffany hell. Payne. Do breast implants get taken out? <laughs> Five question marks. Short answer. Why? No. Why would you ask that? Our next question is from- Why would you ask that? What? What? Oh, fuck me. We need to fucking cut the breast implants after they're dead. Oh, fucking- Why would they fucking- Why would you ask? What? Who would- Recycling? Wait, what the fuck? Ot, ot. How do morticians decide what to do? Wait, do you know what would get taken out? I bet you, if there's some with like, hardcore like, gold fillings and shit. You know, like big, like expensive, I bet you, I bet you, gold teeth. That would take those out, for sure. They, they would loot that. Like, family, absolutely. Bro, people would fucking rob, they would literally b dig up graves. Okay, to fucking loot that shit. You don't think that they would take it out of someone who's like, like, oh, they don't care anymore. Like, fuck it. They'd want me to take it. Of course I'd take it, right? Like, what the fuck? That's fine. Who wouldn't do that? Like, bro, if I had gold teeth, I might be like, yo, after I'm dead, like, whatever, take my teeth. It's fine. I mean, I'm sure that happens. I mean, if I would do it, then other people would do it. Other people would do it. If I, and I would do it. So then, I mean, I'm sure other people in chat would also be like, well, fuck, I'm dead. And then, okay. You know. Although, wait, I wouldn't want to create a, um... I don't want to create a reason. I don't want to create a reason for someone to kill me, though. I don't want to, like, incentivize someone to kill me. Do you know that's actually, like, a thing I thought about? Like, my fucking solicitor keeps telling me I need to do a will. I was like, hmm. If I make a will where everything goes to Abby when I die, well, then she's going to have a really good incentive to fucking murder me. You know? Then she's got a really good incentive to murder me. You know? Like, like that's, that's, like, that's the thought process that was going through my head. I was like, I don't really want to create a fucking big incentive for my wife to kill me, you know? Um, this is why I'm trying to be a net positive, you know, in the relationship. So that way, you know, obviously there's, there's, there's a reason to keep me around. Um, it's one of those things. <laughs> do run, Abby, run. Wait, what do you mean run, Abby, run? What, what do you mean run, Abby, run? I just, it's just, that's literally what I thought of whenever the fucking, when I was like, oh, wait, that means <laughs> I've watched too many, what I've done is I've watched many, many shows where 
states take out like insurance policies and then they murder their fucking um their their you know the spouse or whatever they murder their whoever whoever they take the whoever the insurance thing is they murder it and they try and make it look like a suicide you know um it's one of these things uh what tv shows are what no this happens a lot this happens a lot what do you mean this happens literally all the time bro bro do you know how often people just decide, like, fuck, you know what, I'm just gonna kill this person. Do you people, like, have, do you know people, do you know what people, like, bro, this one guy was like, oh, I'm just gonna murder, I'm just gonna murder my girlfriend and their two kids who are, like, fucking five and ten. Like, I'm just gonna murder, I'm just gonna do that. Like, they just, like, I just feel like doing it. And then they just do it. For no reason. Like, that's what, they, like, literally just do that. Like, they're like, ah, oh, and then they, and then they, you know, it's like, bro, you know, do, do you really want to give people incentives to fucking kill you? You know, do you really want to get people to fucking just kill you for, you know, because I don't, I don't want to, you know, ultimately it's one of those things uh, where, you know, <laughs> great take, what's more? With the dead person's arms. Okay, wait, how do the magicians decide what to do with the dead person's arms? So that's kind of an interesting question. Um, Traditionally, the hands are placed over the umbilicus, so over the navel, and almost always the hands are going to be positioned left over right. The Bro, reason I need to pay a mortician. And then he's, I'm gonna tell him, use wire and shit, make me just do double fucking fingers, okay? Double fingers. Okay, and then actually open my mouth, and like, put my tongue out, okay? I have my eyes open. So I'm like, like this, dude. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Reason being, doing a is hago that face. more often than not, by yeah. the time you pass away? Yeah, doing a, doing a hago face, where my, and make my, each of my eyes look different directions. Okay, double fingers with my tongue out. We'll have been married. So we want the hand with a wedding ring to be on top so people can see it. But maybe the variation on that is if we have someone who's very large and in the casket, sometimes their hands don't quite reach up, or maybe they would meet, but it's so high up in the casket, we wouldn't be able to close the lid securely. So if that's the case, we usually just put the hands at the side, typically resting just on top of the hips. Here's a question from Aaron Execution. I wanted to go into the field of work back in the day, but I was afraid of how it would affect me. What's one situation that's affected you the most, good and bad? Could that line What's of that? work cause PTSD? Well, the truth of it is, um, it can be a very emotionally taxing job. You do see a lot of things that you just don't want to see. Graphic injury, increasingly decaying bodies, burying children. All those things are oh, really, really, really oh, hard. The but there are a lot of good things too. Be For instance, hard. When you come across a situation like that, you're in a position to actually help a family in a way that really nobody else can. As for it causing PTSD, maybe. I think it depends on the person. But I think if you put the idea that you're there to help first, kind of before your own emotional investment in it, that's probably the ticket to keeping you free of, of those kind of debilitating anxieties. Next up, we have Jesus. a question from Horror of the Orient. Why do dead bodies have Wait, to that, I just thought about that. Even if you're not a mortician and just you're a funeral person who just does funerals all the time, that's gotta be some depressing shit, right? Just being constantly around people who are like crying and sad and mourning just 24 7. Like, that'd be fucking weird. That, that would fuck with your. If that's your everyday experience, like five days out of the week, it's just c people crying and fucking sad and depressing, and that's the vibe you're around. That energy, bro. Like, how the fuck? That's some. Oh, jeez, Jesus. That that that'd be fucked up. That'd be fucked up. Why do dead bodies have to be like prepared and shit? Just toss me into the ocean. Why is this so complicated? Just drop me in and let the orcas eat me. Okay, that orca. That for starters, they probably get sick. Okay, and because you fucking got like a bunch of bullshit in you. Okay, for start, the, you probably got a bunch of fucking. Okay. Shit on your like various chemicals and things in your skin. I mean, okay, for, okay. Burning them straight away, I feel like is, there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? If you're gonna get cremated, can you just get burned? Can you just cremate it real fast? To be prepared and shit. Just toss me into the ocean. Can you just? Why is it so complicated? Just drop me in and let the orcas eat me. That could possibly be an option if we're talking about burial at sea. The reason we prepare bodies is to provide time for families to gather. More often than not, states are going to have a limit between the time a person passes away and when they have to be either buried or cremated. With embalming, it actually negates the necessity to bury a person right away. So let's say we're having a funeral Banks and we have jet. families coming from both sides of the country. Hard to do that in 72 hours, let's say. Lucky if bitch. we embalm a body, then we don't have to worry so much about the timing, and we can delay it a little bit if we need to. I don't have a great deal uh, of experience with burial at sea, um, being in the most landlocked state in the country. 
<laughs> but, but there are protocols for um, shrouding and wrapping and then disposing of a body a certain number of miles out on the coast. Um, so that way, when it goes overboard, it doesn't wash up on shore and the orcas get to eat you just as you wished. Here's the next question Ugh. from Dollar Sign. Do morticians really remove all the inside organs and put them at the foot of the dead person in the what? casket? What? Or is that a lie? What? Thankfully, the that fuck? is an outright what? lie. Who? Typically, with an embalming, what? we don't have to remove the organs at all. They can just what stay right in the body. About? Even if we have an autopsy um, in which the organs have been removed for study, they're typically placed back in the body cavity. So putting them in a bag at the end, not gonna happen. And at any rate, it's a huge liability. What if it broke open? Or what if it was just sloshing around in the end? I never heard the of that. Out? Who just, you don't want that. We don't want that. Who said that? No. Our next question is from Frantic Woman. Can morticians put facial expressions on the dead? That is a great question. Yes, more or less. So typically a person's facial expression will almost make itself when oh, we close shit. the jaw and set the features. Now there are things we can do. Oh shit, they continue into a big puppet, bro. Oh my god, I need to eye set. Like, like you could even have like a little dance. Get yourself rigged up. Okay, not even just doing this. Have like a have like a little like tell them to do a thing where your eyes open and you fucking look around and then the it's just like a smile and it's like you know <laughs> what's going on boys and you have like a recorded audio track oh my god this could be a whole thing do um to help create a more pleasant expression things like uh, filling in just some animating, of the cheek yeah uh, let's say they've uh, gotten older maybe losing some of their muscle tone we can fill in the cheek with some cotton or possibly uh some fluid that we can inject in to bulk it up a little bit one of the things that i always do is i put a little bit of cotton inside the mouth under the uh Turn at your mouth when you smile. In my experience, uh, generally people that smile more have nicer expressions when they're in the casket. And people that are frowners, they tend to frown in the casket as well. Here's a question from Jordan. Are all morticians this hot? Uh, the short answer to that is no. I usually look like a pasty, stringy, just stereotypical mortician. But when they put me in front of the lights with studio magic, I look very handsome. Our next question is from Elian. Hey, I have a question. What do you do if a person has died oh, in some kind of accident and has a severe injury? For example, lost a limb. Do you fix the part of the body that was injured, decapitated, or do you simply put it back? Asking out of curiosity. Really, Elian, it depends on the type of injury and maybe the magnitude of it. So if someone loses a limb, let's say, if the limb is relatively intact, apart from being severed from the body, it we on. can re-articulate it and actually just sew up all the tissue around it, making sure it's properly embalmed. I have not, thankfully, had too much experience with decapitation, but the way a person handles that, you embalm the head independently from the rest of the body. And then when it comes time to re-articulate the head to the rest of the spinal column, you actually drive a dowel into the spine and then set the atlas of the head, the, the rest of the yeah. neck, on top of that dowel. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Like, I basically a fucking, just a, uh, it stuck a fucking bit of metal in there and then it, uh, with like a little flat part and then bang, stick it together. And I was thinking the same thing for the arms if you ripped off. Just chuck it in. I mean, assuming they got a bit of meat there, chuck it in, bang, bang, <laughs> squish it together. <laughs> So you know it's in the proper place. Then it's just a matter of carefully right, uh, stitching like, up the two ends of the exactly skin how together how and waxing it. over it. Here's a question smart. from the Very Crypto Knight. Do you know why do dead bodies float? Yes, the reason for that is a bacterial buildup in the abdomen that creates gas. That gas will cause the body to float. Here's a question mm. from Dinah mm. Jarrett. The five-year-old questions. Why do dead bodies stink? Asked during breakfast, no less. Well. I have a five-year-old at home, and this is probably a normal breakfast for me. Do you ever have meat or any other vegetable that goes off, spoils, or rots? That is exactly what our bodies do as soon as our immune systems stop taking care of us. You have a lot of internal bacteria living in your gut, all those hollow organs, and those things do smell bad. If a body comes in already smelling bad, already partially decomposed, typically we'll put that body in a body bag if they're not, not already in one. And then a good way to reduce smell is to uh, actually use baby powder as well as baking soda. Both those uh, soak wait. up those nasty smells quite well. Wait, what the fuck? So wait, if you just, um, if you had like a human and then you just immediately remove their immune system. Wait, with all that shit to start going, like what the fuck happens? What the fuck happens? Do they just start like fucking rotting? Even if there's like blood and shit going around and everything's still juiced up, do you just start like do you just start like getting infected everywhere? And you just fucking all your organs fail and you just die, I guess. 
Like, I don't know. This is interesting. Wait, so wait, what the fuck? No, well, they had to be shit in there in the first place. Because we had, like, a... Literally AIDS. Google AIDS. Oh, shit. Discovered AIDS. What the fuck? Uh, that's basically... Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I never really thought about that. I mean, obviously, you understand what your immune system does. Fights off threats and, like, fucking, you know, kills bad shit. But it's like, wait, you're telling me if you just had, like... So you're in a... Like, a per you're in a perfectly sterile environment. There's nothing external. Okay, you, but you've got, and, and the person is completely clean, there's nothing on the skin, and they're in like a void. Okay, and then they're perfectly healthy and fine, and you, you're, you, just, you're, you just magically remove their immune system. Do they then just start dying? Because of all the bacteria inside them just like starts fucking unleashing? Or you think it'd be contained? You think it would be contained? Like, you know? Um... Mm. You don't rot still, still, still created. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what happens? Are you just going to start rotting? Because it doesn't make sense. To me, it's like, no, you'd be chilling. But then, obviously, the second you get any infection or any any minor thing, it would immediately become some major thing because normally, like, there'd be inflammation and the fucking cells would go out and they'd do all that shit where they kamikaze and do all that crazy fucking, you know, and it would stop it. But this would just, you know, in the case that you don't have the immune system, it would get out of control and you would... But what I'm saying is, like, if you're in a void, does that still happen? Do you just start fucking rotting? Do you start, like... Because you, you wouldn't, right? It's not like your immune system's, like, stopping you from fucking rotting. Oh my god, you would. The bacteria is there any idea. Mmm. Opportunist bacteria. So you, are you telling me my my immune system is constantly fighting shit inside of me? Like you're telling me right now my immune system is constantly PVPing with like bacteria that's trying to get out of my stomach or some shit? I uh, no, I don't know about that one, team. I don't know about that one. I mean, that means would wouldn't I be inflamed and shit? Wouldn't I be fucking, you know? Wouldn't that be like uh? Wouldn't I be like fucking, you know? Have have all that's you know? In your mouth. Well, you got bacteria in your mouth. Mmm. So bacteria in your mouth. But I don't have an infection in my mouth right now or anything. Mmm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I need to talk to someone who has more, who understands this more. To understand what, how this would go. Because obviously I'm talking with Twitch chat. I feel like Twitch chat's assuming they know a lot of stuff. I'm asking the questions because I don't know, I know the answers. I don't know the, I don't know the answers. I'm not sure what would happen, although obviously, I mean, like, like would you die, are you gonna die like, is it, it, are you gonna die in like, uh, like a minute? Are you gonna die in like, five hours? Are you gonna die in like, five days? Like, I don't know. As long as the body's in a sealed pouch. If we have an embalming where somebody is, you know? is smelling bad, really the embalming itself typically will fix some of that smell. Ideally, the fluid will push out the blood, and a lot of times, as soon as, as that blood is gone, the smell goes with it too. If someone is smelling really bad, a, a nice trick is just a little bit of Vicks Vapo Rub under the nose. The next question is from Jash. Is it possible for a mortician to allow someone to watch while they're working on a body? That is a great question. The answer is no, unless they are actually an intern. In most states, they won't allow anybody outside of someone who has a funeral director's license to enter into an embalming room, let alone watch the preparation of a body. I need a fucking video camera though, on those guys. That needs to be a requirement, bro. I, like, bro, like, I, they need a fucking video camera on them where everything goes onto a permanent server and stored. Okay? Straight facts. Uh, uh, bro! I'm just saying. We've all seen Kill Bill, okay? Uh, mate. Mate. I've seen what people- I, I've seen sh people doing shit, okay? I've seen- I've seen- Okay, bro, I watched a documentary on Ted Bundy. He, he fuck- He would literally have sex with the decapitated heads, okay? Alright, I've seen- Bro, shit fucking- There's weird shit out there, okay, bro? Okay, bro? Some weird shit. Alright? Our next question- Where, Okay, all these weird movies and shit, what do you think they're fucking based off? What do you think they're based off, bro? Okay? What do you think they're fucking, like, like, bro? All these weird, okay, all these weird movies and all these, okay. What the, just, I could find you infinite fact. I bet you, I bet you would take one second to find a fucking mortician who was having sex with dead corpses. Okay, I bet you I could find that. 
bro, in one second. Okay. I, I would literally just Google it, and then I would find... Okay. Really? Uh, Mortician... Wait, Morticia Adams? What the fuck? It autocorrected me to something. Necrophilia. Uh, incidents of necrophilia. Okay. Military conflicts. In the 19th century, in the Turkish War, military forces sexually abused dead bodies. During the Morocco War, necrophilia was committed by troops. A Chinese man was killed during the Nanking Massacre after he refused to have sex with a dead with dead woman. Uh, okay. During the Rwandan genocide, sex with dead bodies was reported. Arthur Shawcross, an American, American serial killer, Rochester, New York, had also practiced necrophilia. Uh, I've got, wait. Necro I've got a list of necrophiles here. There's like, there's like a literal list of them. Um, let's find morticians. Let's try and morticians. I mean, dude, this, look at how big this list is. Look at, look at how big this list is, bro. It's like a fucking it's a literal list. Since after her death, Tanta removed all his body from his tomb and lived with the corpse in his home for seven years until its discovery. Jesus Christ. Uh, American serial killer. Most Nelson victims were landladies whom would approach on the premise and renting a room. Nelson often studied this. Okay. Once he made sure he'd gained their trust, he would kill them, usually by strangling them, and engage in necrophilia with their corpse. Um, women killed and sexually abused their dead bodies. Japan serial killer in China. Details. I mean, bro, I don't know. Okay, so what, you're telling me, oh, man, oh, it's, it's just a movie. It's fiction. Oh, it's just fiction, guys. Oh, man, look at, oh, look at all this fiction, guys. American spree killer who raped and beat to death, violated corpse, decapitated and cut off the hands and genitals of a t Bro, I don't want to read this. I don't want to actually ingest this information into my brain. I don't actually want to ingest my... I don't actually don't want to fucking ingest... I really don't want to, like... Okay. I... You know what? Like, we don't even want to fucking look at that shit. What is this clan linking? When I find dead woman in the moratorium... Okay, dude. Okay, dude. All right, bro. Okay. This is from R.L. Queen. How do hair and nails still grow on the body after death? That is an interesting question. The hair and nails do not continue to grow after death. What? There are no uh, life processes that would cause uh, the growth of hair or nails. The look of hair growing and nails getting They're longer is primarily from skin around them retracting. Uh... Right, our next question is from Lord and Savior Jared Gaines. I heard of a thing where you would die and you can have your tattoos preserved and given to your loved ones. Have you ever done something like that? I've never had that request, but I have looked into a company that does do that. So really what we would have to do is just remove that outer layer of skin. It's the company would probably send us a biohazard a shipping container so we could mail that top layer of skin with the tattoo off for preservation and then probably framing uh, before they would send it back to the family. Here's a question from... That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Wait, okay, you say that's nasty, right? But then you have like skins of animals on your wool. That's literally the same thing, bro. You're like, you had a sheepskin rug when you were a kid, right? That's literally the skin of a dead animal. It's the same thing. It's just like the skin of a human versus the skin of a sheep. Have you not seen a sheepskin? Well, you don't have sheepskins? Not the same. How is it not the same? Okay, the same equals that's it's the same shit. It's like a skin. It's just you know, it's the skin of your boy, dude. Okay. Job for a Cody. So I do have a serious question. What are happening to the bodies of the deceased with coronavirus? <laughs> are they cremated? Are morticians wearing hazmat suits or something? That is such a good and relevant question. So when someone dies from coronavirus, they do not have to be cremated right away. We can embalm their body. It was kind of scary right away because I remember very distinctly um, handling bodies of people that had died of the coronavirus before we knew how it was spread. We always wore the maximum number of 
personal protective equipment that we could. So not quite a hazmat suit, but PPE. the next thing closest to it. Coronavirus is spread by droplet infection, right? By respiration from the body. Whenever you manipulate a body, let's say from the place of death, there is gonna be some expulsion out of, the, out of the lungs. Right as coronavirus started, we would start to shroud every body with a plastic shroud to contain in any sort of expulsion from their mouth, whether uh, aspiration or um, just simply breath. You wouldn't normally think that that would be a right. If any magician got coronavirus, okay, they need to fucking do an investigation. Okay, that's what they need to do. Okay, straight up, straight up. Problem with the dead body, but as it turns out, we would always see kind of foggy condensation on that plastic shroud right around okay. the face. And that's it. Thank you for all your great questions again. I was happy I could inform and teach you guys uh, a little bit more about- This guy is fucking man, bro. This guy's like the widest farming this guy. The widest farming this guy. He better get all the profit from these videos. Okay. Or at least 80% of the profit. Okay. There's, there's, there's more attention is carrying this fucking, this TV. Okay. Like, I bet you they didn't pay him shit. They probably like gave him like, like 200 bucks or something and paid for his flights. Like, uh, like, dude, that is so fucking, holy shit. Because this guy's carrying their fucking, their channel, mate. This guy's fucking man. Because he is. God damn, damn, God damn.